So in this video, I'm sharing some of the gear that I've used in late winter and early spring conditions, which can be one of the most beautiful times of the year to get out and enjoy the mountains. But there are a few things that beginners especially should keep in mind if you wanna stay safe and warm in these colder conditions. This morning, I woke up to a very rare snowfall on my local mountain, Montserrat. So I just had to get out and make a bit of an impromptu video to show you this incredible mountain, as well as some of the gear that I'm using. This is a really rare event. I've lived down in this village for about five years and I've only ever seen snow once on this mountain. And that was during COVID when there was complete lockdown and we couldn't even leave the house. So I remember looking out from the balcony just wishing that I could be up here. So excited that I got to be here for this. It's so special. Going to the summit. We're gonna go through all the basic stuff you need. We're gonna start with your head, which is probably one of the most important things. On my head here, I've got two beanies. I've got a polo fleece and a merino wool liner. So I put on the liner first and then the polo fleece over the top. The reason I bring two is basically because it's a little warmer. These are both very thin. And if I lose one, I've still got backup. Next, we have gloves. You could do the same thing by wearing a wool liner, which I usually do. But in this case today, I just have some waterproof and snow proof gloves that I have from Rab. Gloves is always a tricky gear choice to make. It's always a fine balance between finding warmth and dexterity. And I think this Rab Velocity glove hits that balance perfectly for me. I think sizing up a little bit to allow a thin liner to go inside is a smart choice with gloves because it's always a good idea to have at least two pairs of gloves, especially in the higher mountains. But having said that, the RAV velocity is more than adequate for use in spring conditions on its own. It is completely windproof and mostly waterproof. Like after a while, it will get damp in very wet conditions, but for a winter hike on a cold day, they are perfect. Backpack, doesn't have to be anything special in here. I've just got water, a little bit of food, and an extra jacket, which I'll go over later. So this backpack that I'm using today is from Blue Ice, who specialize in making lightweight Alpine gear. They're a relatively fresh face in the outdoor world. I think they're coming out of Chamonix, and they've released some incredibly lightweight, high-performance gear in the last few years. This particular pack is the Firecrest, which is designed for ski mountaineering, which means it's certainly overkill in terms of features for something like a day hike but it's got all the features that I recommend and love, like a stretch fabric water bottle pocket and shoulder pockets. And it has a very comfortable hip belt, which can be easily stored away. Although it doesn't have pockets on the hip belt for obvious reasons. But for the average day hiker, the most important thing with your backpack is that it's comfortable. It needs to fit your back correctly and it needs to have all the room for the things you need to carry. And honestly, if your backpack ticks those boxes, it's probably all you need. Now my clothing layers in this case, I have my Patagonia Micro Puff hoodie. This has a DWR coating around the outside, so it will take a little bit of a snow shower or a little bit of mist, but certainly want to have an outer jacket, and that's what I have in my pack, which I'll show you later. This is from Smart Wool. It's very old, but this is uh, kind of a mid to base layer. It's, I think, a 100 GSM, 100% merino wool skivvy. So I can zip this all the way up and it has another little extra beanie as well. So in the worst case scenario, I'm going to be able to keep my head really warm with that third layer. I like this zip because one of my priorities on a winter hike is making sure that I don't sweat. So I can really open that up if I'm starting to heat up a little bit and allow myself to breathe a little bit so my clothes don't get saturated in sweat because when you're wet and cold, that's bad news. Underneath that, this is just a t-shirt from Lululemon. There's nothing particularly special about it, but the main thing is that it's not cotton. I usually like to wear wool or some type of polypropylene, but this is comfortable, it's loose fitting, and it's a really nice base layer when it's not too cold. Now my pants are soft shell pants. I don't have a base layer underneath that, although I could, but it's certainly not cold enough right now. So I've just got the soft shells. These are from Ternua, that's a Spanish brand. I think this is the Curoso, Curoso, something like that. I really like soft shell because again, they're windproof, slightly waterproof. Again, they'll put up with a little bit of mist, but certainly not a downpour. So if it's likely to be raining, maybe you'd wanna take an outer shell for your pants. Again, most of the time I don't wear a base layer underneath these because I find that I warm up quite quickly. It's also a really good idea to bring sunglasses because once the sun does come out and starts reflecting off the snow, it's going to be very bright. 
So the sunglasses I've been using through the winter have been the new Howlin from Valen Classics. If you watch the channel, you know I love this brand. I've used just about every model they have from the Glacier model to the Waylands, which are my through hiking sunnies, and even the ski goggles, which are also really, really good. The main reason I like Valens in general is that they're virtually unbreakable. They are made for the mountains, despite their casual and relaxed kind of look, which I actually love. And the tint on these is also very, very nice. Makes everything look like golden hour, which is always nice. On my socks, I have my standard socks that I always wear. Nothing different there from winter to summer. I find that I'm able to stay quite warm. That probably has something to do with my shoe choice, which I'll go over in a minute. But the socks I'm wearing and pretty much always wear are silver light socks and you can see a whole video about that right here now always just in case i like to have an extra jacket that i'm planning on not using but just in case it gets very cold or very wild i can put this on and i know that i'm going to be very comfortable this particular jacket is from cortazu so this serves both as an insulating layer and a protective outer shell now one thing that i said in my previous video about layering is that you want each layer to do a specific job this jacket breaks those rules a little bit because it is both insulative and it's an outer protective layer that is both windproof and waterproof so in this case i am breaking my rules a little bit here and this is probably not something that i would normally purchase but cortazo did give it to me to test out and try out and i think that's a really important point to stay fairly fluid in your mindset i think it's really important to be open-minded and test the boundaries and try new things and not get stuck in one particular mindset because i think that's a, <laughs> a very dangerous place to be and i think we probably are living in a world that is the result of that it's like people only do things because they get paid and that's just really sad so whilst I still firmly believe that each layer you wear should perform a specific task and in general items that perform a singular function of being either insulative or protective is the best way to go for both performance and reducing weight, there is something to be said for having a jacket that can do everything, especially when the quality and performance of the product is as good as this. This insulated hard shell has the same waterproof membrane as the other Cortazu jackets, but the main difference is that this is two layer as opposed to the three layer which you'll find in the regular hard shells and just about every other serious hard shell mountain jacket. The interesting thing is that the waterhead rating of this insulated jacket is the same as the other Cortazu jackets, which is 20,000 millimeters. And likewise, the breathability is rated at 20,000 grams per square meter every 24 hours. Although I imagine that rating is related to the breathability of the membrane, not the jacket itself. So keep that in mind. If I'm doing any level of high intensity work, like hiking fast or skiing uphill, I'm just going to cook myself in this style of jacket. So whilst an insulated hard shell can be useful for easy hikes, downhill skiing and sitting around a camp, I'm personally not likely to bring this type of insulated hard shell on a trip that requires a higher level of intensity because I'll be warm enough just from doing the activity itself. And in that case, my preference will be to bring an insulated jacket and a separate hard shell jacket that I can isolate and modulate if and when I choose. But having said that, I certainly wasn't mad at how warm and comfortable this jacket is when either sitting around a camp or taking an easy hike like the one I did today. One other thing I like to bring on a winter hike generally is a thermos of hot water. Now you might think that this sounds like a bit of a luxury, but it can also be a bit of a lifesaver in really tough conditions. Boil a kettle, fill it up with hot tea. Sometimes I like to put hydration powder in there as well. Probably stay away from things like coffee if you're gonna bring this. Try and make it something that's gonna be good for rehydration. Another thing that is a bit of a staple for me now on any kind of winter hike is this hand warmer from Unigear. This also serves as a second battery for my phone and anything else I want to charge. So I can just tap that and within a couple of seconds this can heat up to 55 degrees Celsius. And it's very nice to warm the hands. So that's not necessarily on the checklist but it's definitely a good option. The last thing we're going to talk about is footwear. Now, this is probably one of your most important choices. Now, what I'm wearing today is a barefoot or natural style shoe, which just happens to be my preferred style of shoe. And yes, you can go out in winter conditions in these natural barefoot style shoes, as long as they have some kind of waterproof coating. So there's often a perception that in order to stay safe in winter, you need very rigid boots and crampons. And whilst this is certainly necessary in some circumstances on high mountains, I don't think it's a requirement in every situation. And as a beginner who wants to get out in colder conditions, it may be more useful to adapt your current hiking boots with something like micro spikes 
rather than going down the path of buying rigid mountaineering boots and crampons, which is both expensive and likely unnecessary in many cases. Now, the rigid boots I like to use are the Kaland Stella. They're a little-known Italian brand. They have been around forever, but you don't see them very often. And I'm super happy with this model for mountaineering trips, but for me, they're just overkill for something like a hike. So if the trip doesn't involve hard ice and long, steep snow ascents, I'm always going to opt for a minimal waterproof boot like the Vivo Barefoot Magna. I think this is personally the best model that Vivo Barefoot make. It seems much wider than their more casual models. And even though it looks a little bit goofy, like many barefoot shoes do, it's surprisingly capable in the mountains. The grip is excellent thanks to the Michelin rubber, and the wool-lined upper offers an extremely comfortable fit on any terrain. Most of all, I enjoy the fact that they are lightweight, I can feel the trail beneath me, which I believe results in a lot more stability and less cumbersome hiking. So if that's something you're interested in trying, I recommend exploring and learning a little bit about barefoot style shoes, which I have many videos about. Now the ones that I'm wearing right now are actually made of a combination of leather and wool. And the leather serves obviously to keep the environment within the boot dry. And just like many other leather hiking boots, they do require a little bit of care but they are very good at keeping the warmth in and keeping the cold, wet environment out. I haven't treated these with anything in particular, but they seem to stay perfectly dry. I've used a couple of different models of this particular boot, the Magna, in various different forms. And the Magna has really become my go-to winter boot now. I've actually climbed significant mountains wearing these. And whilst they are not a rigid boot, and I certainly wouldn't recommend you go out into really serious high altitude winter conditions wearing those shoes, it can be done and the way that it can be done is by using micro spikes so these are a set of micro spikes and it basically turns any shoe into a winter capable shoe and it's a very good idea to wear these when it's icy and snowy they can easily be adapted to any shoe of any size which makes them very usable in many different situations no matter what you're wearing on your feet i know that crampons can be super confusing at the start with uh, the b boots and the c boots and then all the different styles i think initially if you're just getting into winter hiking you know don't worry about crampons just get yourself a pair of micro spikes and enjoy the journey so that's some of the gear that i've been using in colder conditions i've linked all this gear below for you to check out and if there's anything you use and recommend why not put it in the comment section and let us know Slap a like on the video if you've learned something and I hope you've enjoyed these beautiful and very rare visuals of a snowy Montserrat. I'm good, I'm just doing some B-roll with the shoes. I'll see you in the sunshine.